Use heartbreak to level up. Heartbreak is one of the most powerful motivators that a man could use, period. I've been through a few heartbreaks and um, my last biggest heartbreak is what caused me to really change my life around. It was one of the biggest motivators that I had at the time that caused me to turn my life around. It, it gave me that lift off that I needed. And so in this video, I just wanna talk about how to use it and why it's such a big motivator and how I used it to turn my life around, okay? So to tell you a little bit about the heartbreak I had, it was my ex of three years had left me for my best friend, okay? This was back in 2020. 2020 was a very, it was a big turning point for a lot of the world. And while everybody was panicking about COVID and all that and losing their jobs, I wasn't panicking about any of that. I was just going through my own identity crisis. Actually, COVID was pretty sweet for me because everybody got laid off or I got like, I didn't have to go to school. I didn't have to, I think I was in college at the time. I didn't have to show up to college. I didn't have to show up to work and I was getting an unemployment check and everybody was free all the time to hang out. Of course, everybody wanted to quarantine and stuff, but a lot of people weren't paying attention to that. Um, so 2020 came around and uh, I broke up with my ex of three years and she just immediately starting, started dating my best friend. I was very heavy on drugs, Xanax, alcohol, weed, and really anything I could get my hands on. And I ended up going to jail like two months later and I was facing years, okay, getting, I had to get, uh, they were going to ship me to prison, right? Because I was on probation from something I did when I was like 19 years old, and I recently had just went to jail for another, uh, for another case, and that case was causing me to violate my probation. So whenever I got done dealing with my case in Louisiana, they were going to ship me to prison in Mississippi. So I was facing uh, at least three years. And um, so I'm in jail and my ex who we were very, very, very toxic. Um, it was very toxic, but we broke up and she's out there dating my like childhood best friend and everything. And that was the lowest I've ever felt in my life. Um, that was the lowest I've ever felt in my life. And of course I had to stay in jail for a few months and sit in the shame and, uh, wonder what they're doing out there. Of course I had people telling me what they were doing, you know, saying that they're in love and everything. And I, I just felt so embarrassed and so small and, and I was filled with so much shame and guilt and it took me a, a a minute to really take responsibility for what had happened and to accept that i'm the reason that i am where i am and um you know it all hit me you know because at first when i first went to jail i thought i could just bond out like i always do um but no i couldn't bond out because i was on probation and i violated that probation so i had to stay in there until i get s that case solved or whatever resolved and then after that i have to immediately go from that jail to a prison well in there is where i decided to change my life around while i was in jail in my dorm i remember i was probably two months in three months in and i just had this epiphany go off this light bulb went off in my head and i was like I just realized it then and there, like I snapped into reality and I said, if I don't change the way I act, the way I think, the way I live my life, this will be my reality forever. It just something clicked. I, didn't, I don't know how to explain it. It's just at that moment, I was at a crossroads. It was either keep doing what I'm doing 
or be the opposite of who I am now and change my life for the better. And in that moment, while I was in my dorm, I remember it like it was yesterday. I was just sitting on my bunk and I got up and I just looked around and I saw, you know, 18 year olds in there. I was 24 at the time. I saw 18 year olds in there, 20 year olds in there, 25, 26, 27. Then I saw 30 year olds in there. And then I saw 40 year olds and I saw 50 year olds and there was an 80 year old dude in there. And I was just like, I could be any one of these people. And so from that point on, I was like, I don't care if I get shipped to prison. Obviously, I don't want it to happen, but if it does happen, it doesn't matter. From here on out, every single day for the rest of my life, I will become the best version of myself possible. It was it was that simple. I was like, I don't care how long I have to be in here. I don't care what I have to do. I don't care what I have to go through. From here on out, I'm different. And from that day on, I just changed. I changed from that day on, right? I stopped wasting time. I stopped thinking about dumb things. I stopped talking in dumb manners. I, I I started reading. I started reading. I remember I called my mom and I was like, mom, don't buy me any more commissary. Don't buy me any more store food, nothing. If you're gonna send me money, if you're if if you if you insist on sending me money or paying for anything, just buy me some books. That's it. I don't want anything else. I don't want food. I don't want commissary. I don't want none of that. I just want books. I need books. Right? And a Bible. So from then on out, she started buying me books. Uh, she got me a Bible. Um, she started sending me motivational pictures um, and quotes. And uh, by the grace of God, I, I know it was God. He... Because... It was like a month or two later of me like being dedicated to that. Like my case got dismissed. They decided not to ship me to prison. Like it shouldn't have happened, bro, but it did happen. And I believe it was God. It was God looking out for me. And he looked at my heart. He looked at, he looked at who I was and he could see like there was genuine change. And he let me go and I got out and it was, it was insane. But I knew the second I got out, I had to keep my word to myself. I'm can I will I am changing my life. I am changed. Okay, so I got out. All right, going back to the breakup point. Um, obviously, I'm still crushed. I'm still torn to bits and pieces. I'm like obsessed over her and obsessed over them and like thinking about them 24/7. And I still feel extremely embarrassed, extremely played. Right, this is my childhood best friend. Right, we did everything together. Now, we weren't good friends to each other. We were very toxic friends. Um, but I guess that's what made the emotional bond like so strong and so heavy. Anyways, um, after I got out, after I got out, I was so focused on becoming the best version of myself. Now, I want to pref preface this by saying don't go out of your way to get a heartbreak, right? They suck, but they, they are very powerful. I had so much hate in my heart. I had so much hate, jealousy, and envy in deep, deep inside my heart. And I used every single ounce of it to do things that I have never done before in my life. I worked out so hard, bro. Every single day. I woke up at four in the morning, jogged a mile. I've never jogged a mile before in my life. And I just started doing it every day. And I started listening to motivational videos every single day. And after I jogged that mile, I would come inside, I would do an intense calisthenics workout, and then I would eat this huge meal right? Because I was bulking, trying to put on as much muscle as possible. I did that every single day for like a year. So, and every time I worked out and it hurt and I felt like I didn't want to do it, the only thing that made me, one of the only things, the, the, the dominating thought in my head was, I'll, I'm going to show them. That was it, bro. It was, 
I'm going to show them. And it was, they are not going to be better than me. That was really the main thing. It was, I was obsessed with showing them that, you know, I'm better than them. That was like the only thing. I wanted to run into them one day. I was so fixed and obsessed on one day I will run into them and I will look so much better and I will be so much more ahead than them. They will regret it. They will regret it. Now, I also want to say this. I totally got over that. I totally got over that. I forgave them. I do not care anymore. I genuinely do not care anymore. Like all of that stuff came full circle. I, I could care less about what they do. But I'm saying at the time, the breakup, which was so powerful, fueled me, bro. And when you have that, right? If you go through a breakup, you're gonna feel these emotions either way. It's best to use them. I'm telling you how to use them right now. And I'm telling you how I use them. Use that pain, right? It was a bunch of sadness. It was a bunch of like hurt. It was a bunch of envy. It was a bunch of anger. And I used every single bro. I couldn't not wake up at four in the morning, right? I, I couldn't, like, I've never woken up before at four in the morning before in my life. And I've never jogged a mile before in my life. Do you understand how difficult that was? That was my first time ever doing it. And I just out of the blue, out of the blue, started doing it consistently every single day. That was one of the most difficult things I've ever done. I remember how hard it was, but I was fueled by pure hate and anger and just a drive to prove them, um, to prove that I was better than them, to just my goal, like my go my vision in my head was one day I will run into them. I will be jacked. I will have a new car and I'll run into them and they'll be, I'll just be better than them. I'll just be better than them, right? I wanted them to just keep doing the, I just wanted them to keep doing what they were doing when I left them. I just wanted them to be the same people that they were when I left them. And I wanted to be a completely different character. And I wanted to run into them and just flex on them. That was just, I just had this vision in my head of just running into them and just thinking on the stuff. Um, every day, every day I thought that. And it hurt. It hurt. I'm not going to lie. It hurt a lot, bro. Um, but it was better than sitting there and doing nothing. The worst thing that you could do, right? You have all of this. I had all of this energy. I have. I had so much energy. Energy, emotion is energy in motion. Emotion, energy in motion. I had so much emotion and it was going to get uh, used up either way. Whether I did what I was doing or whether I went out and partied or whether I did a bunch of drugs or whether I just sat around and did nothing all day and just watched Pornhub and just, you know, ate my life away. Either way, I was going to do something because of it. I chose to do the thing that I thought was the most productive, which was work out every single day as hard as possible, read as much as possible, work as much as possible and level up as much as humanly possible. Okay. I didn't even know what I wanted to do at that point. I just knew that I wanted to level up. All I wanted to do was just level up. I didn't know exactly how I was going to get there. All I knew was I wanted a brand new car. I wanted a brand new body. I wanted a lot of money and I wanted to run into them one day and just run into them. And <laughs> the vision that I had in my head was I run into them, flexed up, bossed up and just look at them like I never knew them. That's it not give them any emotion, not give them any reaction. Just look at them like, and that's it. I was working so hard for that one moment. Um, and it benefited me. It did benefit me. And I'm not going to act like I'm not a weirdo, right? I think everybody is a weirdo in their own way. And for me, for the longest time, it was just being obsessed with my ex and uh, my ex-best friend. 
Like, I was obsessed, bro. I was literally the definition of obsessed. Like Kobe Bryant, Conor McGregor obsessed. Um, except it wasn't just about success. It was just about being better than them. I just wanted to be as, as better. I just wanted to be, I don't know how to word it, as much better as I could possibly be than them. The higher I let go and level up, the better. I wanted to be so far above them. And one day I'll just run into them. My biggest fear was not running into them. My biggest fear was them not noticing me. My biggest fear was them being just as good as me. That was my biggest fear, was that I worked so hard that, and they were somehow just as leveled up as me. But that's the thing. I worked so hard every single day. I worked so hard that I was like, there's no way there's doing, they're doing this right now. There's no way they're beating me. I worked so hard to where I knew like, there's no way that they're doing this right now. I'm, I know that they are not doing what I'm doing right now. I would sweat every single day working out so hard. I would read so much. I would study so much. And I would just put everything. I would brainwash myself as much as possible with uh, success videos. I would, I would study success stories. I would watch hours of motivational videos, bro, every single day. And um, everybody around me noticed, or at least my family noticed, because I cut everybody off from my old life. My family noticed. They were like, okay, weirdo. I was like, good. Please, I, if if you didn't think I was if you didn't think that I was a weirdo, I would be afraid, because I wanted to be a weirdo for success. Um, but when you go through a heartbreak, bro, whatever it is, I felt like my heartbreak was like one of the worst kinds, right? Your ex going with your best friend. That's like all of those stories are nightmares. But one thing that I didn't know at the time that I know now is that. Or one thing that I couldn't see at the time that I see now is that you get over it. You really, really get over it. And karma's real. Karma's real, bro. That's all I got to say about that. Um, everything comes full circle. And you just get over it, bro. You live your life and you just, things move on. You move on. No matter how much you try to hold on to it eventually like if you if you just live a life eventually you'll move on and uh, I couldn't see that at the moment but it's what it is and I remember every single day every single day I would uh like I went through a real heartbreak bro every single day I drove around I was hoping I would bump into them every single day I drove you know, I eventually leveled up, you know, my business. If you guys are subscribers, you see my story. You know, I worked really hard, got my first wholesale deal, bought my first truck, you know, started running my lawn care business. And um, I started cutting grass in my hometown. And every single day that I drove, I would look when I was at a stop sign or at a stop sign or a stoplight, red light. And I would just see if I would see them. Like, that's how heartbroken I was, bro. I was broken, for real. Um, and I'm not going to say that I didn't deserve it. I, I deserved all that. Like, all of the crap that I went through, like, that was all me. Of course it was me. I have to take responsibility, bro. A lot of that stuff was my fault. I did them bad, down bad. I was a horrible boyfriend and a horrible friend to them. But that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is how to use heartbreak to your advantage and how to le level up from it. Um... The worst thing that you could do is feel all those emotions and not do anything with them. You have give, been given a gift. If you really put your love into some girl or whatever, and you really, you really like felt like you loved her, and then now you got your heart broken, the worst thing that you could do is waste that energy. Because you're getting an opportunity of a lifetime here right? Very few. You're always going to have that one breakup that it's like it crushes you. You feel like you'll never get over it. 
you f like you just feel like you can't see what the future holds. You have to use that, bro. You have to use that. That is the most one of the most powerful motivators that a man could ever have, bro. There's a lot of other motivators that are just as good, if not better, but heartbreak is very, very powerful because it's your heart. Your heart, bro. Your heart will... Yeah, dude. I ended up doing things that I have never done in my life. And they were extremely difficult. And the only way that I was able to get through it was they're not going to be better than me. They, they will not be better than me. There were times like, bro, I was obsessed. Like, I would put pictures... I would like, obviously I would go on social media and I would look at them, right? I would like see what they were doing. Are they still together? Do they still love each other? Whatever, like, what are they doing? Obviously, I was obsessed, bro. I was heartbroken. And um, I would see them and every time I looked at them, it would, it would hurt. It would like sting. It would sting so bad. Like, I just can't even explain the emotion that I felt. And I would go harder every single day because of it. Um, but there will be times where I, I, I saw them together on social media. And I would screenshot it. And I would go to Walgreens and I'd print out pictures of them together. And I would hang it up on my wall. To remind me every time. This is literally what I thought. Every time that I felt like sleeping in. Or every time that I felt like being lazy. I would look at that and it would hurt me very bad. And I'd get up and I'd go work. I'd work my butt off. Now, that is very unhealthy. And that is very toxic. And that is very, um, it's just unhealthy. Like having that much, I was literally using my pain and my hatred to fuel me. But it, it, did, the, it's, did, it did its job. But there was a point to where, like, I had to take their picture down because it just caused too much pain. But it did get me up. Like, I was not lazy ever. Not one day was I ever lazy. Like, I couldn't allow myself to be lazy, bro. Um, yeah. I would look, I would hang up a picture of them just to remind me of they're not going to be better than me. They can't be better than me. And I would never be lazy, bro. I would wake up on time every single day, four o'clock, do my routine. My ins I had an insane routine, bro. I did as much work as possible every single day. I networked, I leveled up, I, I was organized as hell. I was never organized, I organized my life. And I used that breakup to just completely, it skyrocketed, it got me off the ground from where I was at, a degenerate to like, it got me moving up. And, um, but yeah, since then, I got over it, okay? Um, but I just wanna let, let you know, if you're going through a breakup, bro, if you have gone through a breakup, sometimes now I don't mind going through a breakup. The last girl I was with, right? Uh, it wasn't that bad, but we broke up and I was looking forward to it because I knew I needed to feel that pain. You know, it was hard. You know, just this last girl that I had when I was out here, it was hard, bro. I felt like I really, really, really liked her. Like there was times I was questioning, like, do I love her? And I used that. I used that. I knew I, it hurt at night, sleeping alone at night, not being able to text her. I would see funny memes and I was like, oh, she would think this is funny. And I just had to be like, oh yeah, I can't text her. That caused me to level up. Every time I felt it, I was like, it hurt, but I was like, I need that. I need that. Um, so if you're feeling that, bro, just know that you have a gift and you need to utilize it to your advantage to level up. Whatever your next level is, whether it's getting that body, making your first $10,000, getting a vehicle, um, just changing where you're at mentally, changing your surroundings, changing the people you hang around, or maybe it's moving out of your city, moving out of your state. Um, wherever it is, use the pain that you have in life to fuel you to get to that next level. And if it's hate and anger and envy and jealousy, um, recognize it for what it is and utilize it. Don't just let it go to waste.
don't just feel sad for yourself and all this other bro that is the worst thing you could do is just sit around and feel bad for yourself use the emotions that you have going on in your heart because they're going to be there anyway eventually they're going to die down they are going to die down eventually you don't want to have the few moments that you have with them to go to waste use them as much as you can but eventually you will get over it and uh yeah eventually you will get over it bro and karma is karma is real karma karma is real bro and um it's not even it's not even i would say it's not even karma it's just things balance out things really you could go all over youtube and you could listen to a million people's different stories of how it started off with with like they didn't see a way out the other person got the upper hand in the short in the short term but then over years of just grinding it out and doing the right thing in the long run <laughs> the tables turn and they even out bro um just always do the right thing always stick by your morals and have faith in yourself use the pain that you have that life has given you use it to your advantage to level up be unrecognizable be uncommon amongst uncommon people but yeah that's it just kind of a little story time, how to use heartbreak to level up. I hope you got some value out of this. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, comment, subscribe. I'm dropping weekly videos about self-improvement, wholesaling, real estate, and just life in general. Make sure to hit the like button. Stay motivated. You know what to do.